Right. Uh, first part of the mission, let's have another look at it because we'll I'll move on. Um, and this mission, of course, it is relevant. You'll say, really? Beis HaMikdash? No, no, no. The fact that it says, Yom Tov Shel Rosh Hashanah Shachal Yez I don't know if anybody's looked at their calendar. Uh, when is Rosh Hashanah in the coming year? Rosh Hashanah, actually, I think Tov Shem Pei Dalet is on a Shabbos. It is. So we have to see how, well, as we know, not playing the trick on the Shabbos, but let's see how this all develops. Um, some very interesting halachas of the, some of the Rishonim. Mm. Um, as we move through. So Yom Tavarit Shil Rosh Hashanah Shechal Yes B'Shabbos. I'm looking at the ter- first couple of lines before we go on to the Gemara. But Mikdash Hoyotokin. They blew the shofar in the base of Mikdash. Avalo Bimdino. Maybe Peter put people on uh, all on mute. That's good. Yeah. Um, so they blew the base of Mikdash. Whoa. Lots of Taurus, I can't blame that on anybody, can I? Because I'm the only one not on mute. <laughs> yeah. Blame me. Uh, oh, it could be yours. Okay. But I'll blame you, Peter. Uh, yeah, so anyway, Bamikdosh, uh, they used to blow the shofar on Shabbos in the base of Mikdosh. Avaloi Bamdino. Not outside the base Hamikdash, either it means outside the whole of Yerushalayim or just outside the base Hamikdash area. And we'll have a look at that in a minute. And then we had Mishechor of base Hamikdash when the base Hamikdash was destroyed. His skin, Rabbi Yochum and Zakai, she took him, Bachomokam Sheyeshboi Bezdin. Wherever there is a Bezdin, um, and we we'll have to see what that means as well. Wherever there's a, it sounds like the big Bezdin, the Bezdin of um, 71, but more of that in the Gemara. So, in other words, when there was the Beis Hamikdash in existence, the only place they blew was at in the Beis Hamikdash area, in front of the rabbis. Um, when it was destroyed, Rabbi Yochan and Zaki instituted anywhere where there, that Bezdin sits. And in fact, the later Gemara here explains where, in fact, the Bezdin moved from place to place um, after the destruction. And of course, the Romans after them, too. Um, so they moved from place to place, pillar to post. Um, so stop there and let's have a look at the Gemara, please. Me not Manham. People know about Manham. First word of the Gemara. Secret code. Manham. Minahadimili. Well done, sir. Thank you very much. One point for, or maybe five points um, for Michael. Uh, yeah, Minahadimili, which means where did these words come out from? Which normally means we're looking for a posuk or psukim, a sum took him to tell us that this rule is correct. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean, first of all, why shouldn't you blow on Shabbos? What's wrong with blowing the shofar on Shabbos? Let's have a look. Omar of Levi, Ba Lachmo, Omar of Choma Ba Chanino. There are two psukim. Kosov Echod Omer Shabbosoin Zichron Terua. Yeah. Achude Shashvis in Vayikra, Pasha's Emma, when it talks about the Yom Tovim, it's mentioned Shabbosoin. Uh, actually, if I can call on you, Peter, we'll look up these two Psukim, shall we? Vayikra Chof Gimel 23 Peter, in Vayikra. Uh, Let's have a look at this Pasha. In the seventh month. So, yeah, let's go to Safari. It's not one of the ones I've sent you. So, we have to do the Safari. Yeah, let's go to Leviticus. And let's go for chapter 23. Possible 24. 23 to all good as we scroll down. 23. There we are. 
Yes, Tabe El Bene is a little bit larger. Or we can't do it. Right. Yes, Tabe El Bene Israel. Oh, gone too far. Whoop. Possible 24. Yeah, there it is. Achodesh Hashvi, seventh month, Be'echol Achodesh, first of the month, which is Rosh Hashanah. Yelochen Shabbosoim. They have rest, a Yom Tov. Zichron Teruah. Interesting how he translates this. A sacred occasion commemorated with loud blood. Well, have a look at the word Zichron Teruah. Strictly means a memory of the true or mikra kodesh yes you can say um, a holy calling if you like um, in other words it's a yom tov sacred occasion mikra kodesh the zichron to ruah the translation really is a memory of the true okay that is one possible now we turn to bamidbar Back, just press Safari again. This time we'll go to Numbers 29.1. Not far to go. Another possum. This is in Pinchos. Same words again. Sacred occasion, if you like. Code again. Uh, it will be a day when there will be the truer sound. Okay, Yom Truo Yelochem. So there are these two Sukim. Now we can go back to the Gemara, back to our pact of uh, faces. Yes, thank you. Back to our Gemara. So this view, the name of Rabbi Chama Bachanino, said there are two Sukim talking about Rosh Hashanah and the Shofar. The first one, the first one we saw, was says Zichroin Teruah. Look at Rashi, please. The low true mamish. No, it says zikro. What's this word zikro in Shavua? Sounds like the shofar, not itself. Elo mikrois shel true yomru. People should say words, psukim, about the true, but you don't hear the shofar itself. Okay. Back now to our Gemara. Because of Echod Omer, next line, Yom Trua Yelachem. That was a posuk in Pinchos. So one posuk says Zichron, a memory of, and one posuk says Yom Trua. What do you do with that? Says the Gemara, and this is the view of Rab Choma Bachanino, Lo Kashia, Kan be Yom Tov Shechal Yos Ah, if Yom Tov fell on Shabbos, can be Yom Tov Shechal Yos Bechol if it falls during the week. If it falls on Shabbos, you're not going to blow the shofar. The Torah is telling me, do not blow the shofar. However, if it's during the week, then you can blow the shofar. Okay? That is the first view of the Gemara. Says the Gemara, Omar Rova, just one minute. We learned the, the Mishnah, the first part of the Mishnah, and what do we say? If Rosh Hashanah falls on Shabbos, you don't just blow in any shul, in any house, which you blow in the Beis HaMikdash area. Just one minute, says Rava, back to our Gemara. If that Posuk's telling me, that if Rosh Hashanah falls on Shabbos, it's Zichroin to Ruah. Bamikdosh, have you got it? We get a line he, even Midoraisa he, if it's Min Hatur that you can't blow, Bamikdosh, Heichi, Takinon. How can you blow in the Beis Amikdosh area? The Possocks told me do not blow the Shofar if it's on Shabbos. That's the way we've learned. One question. Second question. But owed furthermore, why can't you blow the shofar on Shabbos? He said, Holav Malocha. It's not a Malocha blowing the shofar. 
the itzrich crawl of me utem that you need this possum to come and tell me don't blow why should you not blow the shofar on shabbos the tona the bay shmuel good to see you malcolm with the bigger uh, halfway down the page half test on the base to he we're learning now why is it that you cannot blow the shofar if Rosh Hashanah falls on a Shabbos, which it does the coming year. All being well. The Tona the Bay Rabbi, I mean, what is the Bay? Just over halfway down the page, Chof Tesom and Beis. The Tona the Bay Shmuel. Kol Meleches Avoida Lo Sa'asu. The pastor tells me only meleches avoda work, which is labor, you shouldn't do. Okay. Yotsa so tikias shofa uradias hapas. The Gemara itself says that's coming to exclude blowing the shofa. Don't think that that is considered a, a malacha of work. Or what's radias hapas? Radius Hapas is where they used to peel off, where they how they used to make chalas or cakes. They had the oven. They would stick the dough on the side of the oven internally, and then they would peel it off. Peeling off is not considered a malocha. Uh, that's called Radius Hapas. It's a chokma. You need to know, be very familiar with how to do that, but it's not, it's not considered cooking. Baking and similarly with the shofar, that is not a malacha. It's considered a chokma. Next line of the Gemara. So there you are, Malcolm. Obviously, full of the chokma to be able to blow the shofar. The ain a malacha. It's not a malacha. So what is the Gemara asking? Why should you not be allowed to blow the shofar on Shabbos? It's not a malacha. If you're telling me it is a malacha, then it shouldn't be permitted in the Beis Hamikdash, which it was in the time of the Beis Hamikdash. So what is the reason why you don't blow the shofar on Shabbos? This is the famous piece. Have you got it? Chochmah ve'ena malacha, Ela Omar Rava. This is Rava talking. Um, this robber was the one who asked the question, if you remember. Um, so he's now supplying an answer. Midoraisa, as far as the Torah is concerned, Mishra Shori. Shori means it's permitted. It's certainly per permitted as far as the Torah is concerned. Verabonon Hu de Gozabe. It's the rabbis who made a gazera. Um, and this came, really is a fence. Um, it's a gazera, it's a ruling. Kudarabba. Like the, uh, the explanation given by Rabba's teacher, who was Rabba. Remember, we often find Rabba and Rabba. Rabba with an aleph at the end, Rabba with a hey. This is utilizing the principle of Rabba do Oma Rabo. Rabo said the following. Hakol chayovim bitkias shoifa. Everyone is obliged with the blowing of the shoifa. The ain hakol bikin. As I'm sure people will testify, it's not everybody who is an expert and can blow the shoifa and is going to blow without any error whatsoever. And therefore, what? Gezeira, there's a ruling, a fence. Shema yitleno biyodai, a person might blow the shofar, doesn't quite come out right, or he's got a shaila about the shofar, a shaila about the blowing of the shofar. And what would he do in his rush on a Shabbos? He's blowing a shofar, imagine. Could be blowing at home, as you can. So imagine he could have been blowing the shofar on Shabbos. 
He will rush out to, I've got a question, must ask the rabbi about this shofar sound. Is it good? Is it not good? The way I'm blowing. And he may come to carry it. May take it out of his house. Basically, he will be carrying the shofar, forgetting that it's Shabbos. And therefore, that is the reason why the rabbis said it's forbidden to blow the shofar. Have a look at Rashi, please. Ah, oh, so just one minute. We'll have to understand this a bit more, but before we go any further, why is it permitted then in the Beis This gazera must be universal. Says Rashi, Uba Mikdash Lo Gozor, the Ein Isser Shavus the Rabbonon the Mikdash. What's been the Shavus the Rabbonon? Where the rabbis made a ruling, what's called a Shavus, it's not really forbidden, but the rabbi says it is. Those rulings do not apply in the Beis Hamikdash. As I, I say, a, a famous rule comes up elsewhere, the Gemara in Beitzer. That ain shvus bemikdash, which means this ruling does not apply. Now you can understand why. In the base hamikdash, where you've got the bezdin hagodol, anybody blowing the shofar there, first thing they they got right next door, they got the rabbis. But more than that, they're not going to forget any halachas here about carrying. First of all, it's not relevant. Uh, but even if it would be, if you're in the base hamikdash area, people are. A bit more cautious about anything they do, and therefore the rulings of Shavuos generally do not apply in the Beis Hamikdash area. So that answers why we do not have the shofar blown anywhere else other than at the time of the Beis Hamikdash. It was blown in the Beis Hamikdash area. Subsequently, when it, the Beis Hamikdash was destroyed. That was moved to any place where the Bezdin Hagodl is sitting, as they move from Yavna and other places. Now, continue. Norman, what would be other examples of Shavuos? I mean, I understand these two because you might have a, a Shaila. So, if you're in the base of English, that would would need to be prohibit that. But what, what, when you say Bein Shavuos, Bein Shavuos, Bein Shavuos, Covers a much wider, things, wider thing, yeah. What are the other things? Um, anything which is a, a gazera. Um, I'm trying to think of things that could be like, we're scared you might tie not tie things. You're scared with certain avoidor in the base hamikdash. Um, any avoidor. So, so, so any, in, any malach. So just like you wouldn't ask anybody. They wouldn't need to ask. They also not, they're not choshish. They, they they might do these things. That's no, that's you're absolutely right. In not in the Beit Hamikdash area. Yeah. So they're, they're, all those gazeras fall aside. Any avera which would be the rabbis have instituted a particular ruling would not apply in the Beit Hamikdash. I say that's a blanket ancient <laughs> Hamikdash. But it is fascinating this whole point here about Shema. Perhaps they'll carry it. Continue the Gemara. Vahainu Tama de Lulav. We've got the same ruling about Lulav. As we know, we do not shake the Lulav. The Lulav is not taken on Shabbos. Vahainu Tama de Megillah. Coming up to Purim shortly. Um, the same reason about Megillah. If Purim were to fall on a Shabbos, now you may tell me. I think, Peter, if you go, uh, there's some that were annoying. Let's put everybody on mute. Yeah. Um, if, as we say here, as far as the Megillah is concerned, actually, it's with our current calendar, you'll find Purim can never fall on a Shabbos, but Shushan Purim can fall on a Shabbos, which means in Yerushalayim, they could have. Megillah or the mitzvah of Megillah with Purim falling on a Shabbos. So again, the ruling is based on this that you do not have any blowing the shofar. 
second one we mentioned was lulav. You might have a shaila with the lulav and you might come and have to run to the rabbi to ask a shaila about the lulav and you'll forget yourself. And it's Shabbos. And that ruling applies even if there is an Eruv. Because that it's a blanket ruling that says that where if Shabbos falls, or the other way around, if these Yom Tovim, whether it's Rosh Hashanah, Sukkot, or Purim falling on a Shabbos, we do not blow, we do not shake the Lulav, we do not lay in the Megillah, Kriyas HaMegillah, if it's on Shabbos, it would be delayed. Um, or in the case of Lulav, it's left for that day and you blow and you'd have the shaking of the Lulav on other days um, because of the same reason. Amazing. Um, that they were so concerned. If you think about how often this may happen, it means now they've stopped the blowing of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah in case someone would be carrying. Now, you know, for us, it's it's very very hard to understand that did you make a gazera, which is now ca carrying on for a couple of thousand years, that nobody is hearing the shofar, which is a mitzvah in our Torah, and the rabbis with their, their shoulders, if you like, have said, no, we are not going to have the shofar blown on Rosh Hashanah in case somebody will carry that shofar without an Eruv in the street. Uh, and that's the reason why. So it does show, I think, perhaps how far we are, but how turned on and concerned they were with not desecrating the Shabbos. And, you know, the rabbis of that time perhaps understand, certainly understanding much more about what it means, Kedushat Shabbos, and what it means the Anavera on the Shabbos, desecrating the Shabbos, they were prepared to tell that all for these, I say, a couple of thousand years now, that we do not have the shofar blown on a Shabbos in case somebody somewhere will carry without an Eruv. It, as I say, it shows you the importance ensuring that desecrating the Shabbos does not occur. Now, you know, for us, you'd say, wow, this is going a long way, but perhaps we don't really understand that Kedusha Shabbos and what it means desecrating the Shabbos. I think that's really the lesson we're learning here, because otherwise you'd say, surely not saying everywhere, right across the whole globe, and we're talking about so many years, so many communities, Nobody is blowing the shofar on, on Shabbos. And we've explained before about the importance of the shofar. Um, and that, with Megillah, that's quite easy. It's just delayed for a day. But if you're talking about shofar, or indeed Lulav, you've lost that day. Uh, but nevertheless, they, they felt it was so important, understanding the nature of Shabbos, the Kedush of Shabbos, not to desecrate the Shabbos. And that's a ruling we've got in there. Um, so that applies to Megillah. But there are a couple of questions we can ask on this. If I can call upon you, Peter, to have a look. The first one is the Teferis Yisrael. The Vlunchitz, one of the um, major Pirushim. Let's have a look what, what you've got for us. What was the first Yes, thank you very much. This is no, no, not the app, just the first one. That's the next one we'll get to. So, yeah, that's the one we want. This is the Mishnayas. Whoop. Mm, yes, this is the Mishnayas uh, with the Batanura, Tosus, Yom Tov, Melechus, Shlomo on actually this Mishnah, Yom Tov, Shechalias, Mishabas. If you can scroll down, please. There's a pirish at the bottom, the Tiferes Yisrael. Ah, oh, very good. He's got what's called the Yochin and Boaz. Yochin is normally a short uh, explanation of the Mishnah. And then he's got the Boaz, which goes sometimes into depth 
on various subjects when he feels he'd like to do that. Here we've got this base right at the end. And if you follow down to a slightly further, stop, 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 that's it. To, no, come there. Where are you up to? Where's your arrow? Six lines from the end. He says, Voho in large, bold. There. Thank you. But what's the origin of the name Jochen and Burz? What's the. What's the um... Oh, we, we talk about the Jochen and Burz in the base Amikdosh. Uh, yeah, the pillars. So he's using those, to, they're like the twins. Um, Yochin, because they're two different Pirushim he's got on on the base on on, uh, on the Mishnayos, so he's just using those words from the base on Mikdash. Um, this idea of twinning with two different Pirushim, one in more detail than the other, um, and that's so where, where the base of Mikdash. Which which parts of the base of Mikdash were the Yochin and Burz? Uh, the Yochin. Uh, you caught me exactly where they were. I've been trying for years. Sorry? I've been trying for years. <laughs> been trying to catch. Right, no, there you go. Where <laughs> exactly kidding. they are. Um, perhaps we can find them. Let's have a quick look. Um, They're not the pillars, are they? They're not the pillars. Yeah, or uh, hold on a minute. Let me just see if we've got here. Um, do -do. Uh, let's just see if we can find it very quickly. If not, then we'll... So I'm sorry, I don't mean to hold that up. We'll say, no, no, just have a quick look. Uh, let's have a look one second. If it doesn't take... Let's just see if we've got... Uh, yeah, have a look. Yes. There were two Amud in the Simitol. I think it must all be on that Pasuk in 7.51. Maybe I can back to Peter. Can we go to King, to Malachim? Malachim Aleph. So go to Tanakh, Malachim Aleph. Scroll down a bit, Malachim Woo, oh yeah, that's nice. Uh, um, Malachim 1, chapter 7. It's based upon a Shlom Shlom Shana. Let's have a look at Shlom Shlom Shana. So keep scrolling down. Let's have a look. Where are you up to? One minute. Now keep going a bit more. Go down a bit more. Stop. And there were two columns. Now go to commentary. Tells you how oh, yeah, normal is possible twenty one. It says by Yeah, have a look at uh, well, have a look at right, the commentary here. Let's go to Rashi. Let's go to Hebrew. He calls them Yochin Uboyas. Right. Uh, go pre press on the English on that. It doesn't really help you much. Yeah, uh, right. Keep scrolling down further. Seventeen, eighteen. These two columns. Yeah, keep going. 
top of the oh, nice and porticos here. People knows about porticos. The coasters keep going. A bit more. There you go, 21. Uh, have a look at the Rashi again. Oh, let's go into Hebrew on the on the there you go, commentary. Well Roshua Mudim Mas Shushon, Shushon like a uh, flower. Hatsi Amma Brichkol Echo the coast of the dark shushan with Oh, we don't need that. Uh, okay. Go to no, oh, we're on the wrong posse. Go back to 21. Sorry. That's the one we want. No connections in Russia. Commentary. Let's have a look at the Barbanel here. Or 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 no, keep scrolling down. If you've got the Mitsud, uh, uh, let's have a look at Mitsuda Stobid. Yochin. Yeah, why is it called Yochin? Says the Matsudas, one of the Pirushim. Le Simon Toiv, She Yikoin Habayiswad, it should remain firmly based forever. And he called the other one Boaz, who Milo Mur Keves, Bo Oiz, Rotsaloma, which Habayis has it in this house of the Mesa Mikdosh, but Kabonis and Asimbo. You might say, "Oiz v'chozek strength for Yisrael, Klal Yisrael." So, according to the Matsudas, that's what these words mean. Uh, these two pillows, the pillars they had uh, on the right. So, there's your Yochanan and Boaz. Have a quick look at the Malbim, and then we'll thank you, Mervin. Um, at the Malbim, uh, yeah, a bit higher. Whoop. No, it's going in alphabetical order. So, Malbim, yes, Mal. See if he says anything about this. Scroll down. Shemoni Esri Amar. Yeah, the is. No, there's no comment there. So, yeah, it's very nice. It's for us. The Matsudas Dobidi helping us out. Why those names? Yochin means it should be firmly based and last forever. And Boyaz means with it. That will be a strength. This the base Hamikdash will be a strength for Klal Yisrael. In fact, a strength for everybody having the opportunity to bring Korbanos. So uh, there you are. There's your Yochanan Bo. So using those words, interesting at the top there was he says a lily design or a rose design. Um, so that's very nice indeed. So it's thank interesting you, that those those two. The, the Yochin just explained the words, the Boaz good more, it's, it's like the sort of Stobbin and sort of Sion, isn't it? They're, parallel, they're sort of complementary um, commentary. Yeah, you mean... One, that, one, yeah, one, one yeah. of them is just ex very concise, it's what the words mean, the other's giving more explanation as to what's going yes, on. Yes, very, yeah. So what are you saying? The same with Mr. Stobbin. Yeah, and Mr. Yeah, you have yes, this yes, yes. pattern. It's if you've got a, this, this idea of twinning. Um, yeah. So to first start using those two words there, as, as uh, these columns saying the same thing with his fridge, he's got this twinning. But you know, you're quite right there with the, with the Matsudas, it's very much like that. One going into more detail, one giving sources. Um, yeah, so here we go again, he's got the same, uh, the twinning. So thank you for clarification there. Let's go back to, no, Peter, if we can go back to that, Therese Israel, now that we've uh, got to the the background of the names of his Pirushim. Uh, no, let's go back to... That's the one we want. Thank you. So this one, we look at the Boaz. Well, the Yochin. The Yochin is normally, I say, more of a short, generally, a short Pirushim, uh, very concise, yeah. And this goes into more detail on extra topics. And you'll see, for example, Gozru The question is, as we've just seen, we're scared the people will <coughs> carry in the streets. Continue the next line. The log. Oh, we said no, we don't need that. That's talking about outside. Drop down a couple more lines. Vahor. There's an eye. Oh, that's it. Middle of the line. 
uh, up, up one line. That's it. After that, Voho. Next word, Voho. This is the question. Voho de lo gozru b'mila b'shabbos sheyava hasakin kishielech ilmod lomu. That's a good question. They made the gazera for shofar, lulav. Why? And then what happens in the case, or oh, they said the same thing applies to Megillah, that on Megillah you would delay uh, laning the Megillah. Why don't they do the same if it falls on Shabbos? Um, a meal should be postponed until Sunday. Could be quite helpful. Have a look at the end of the line. The yesh loima, or yesh loima, you can answer. To hochashani, it's different here. The Kula Alma to reader. Everybody is busy with the mitzvah of Shofa, the mitzvah of um, Lulav, even the mitzvah of Megillah. Every person has a chiv to hear the Megillah on Purim. People who can't go to shul, they should have people coming around to lane for them, uh, people in hospitals, wherever. Same with the shofar. However, the lo mitka chad lachavre. Ah, if you're on your own, nobody, there's nobody to remind you necessarily. Drop down to the very end. Uh, the uh, the la very last line, well, the penultimate line at the end of that, only relieve. The Kol Hamatsuyin Eitzel Milo Ushita Mumkin Hain. Ah, that's another reason. So, in other words, one point is here, it's normally done. You're talking about the shofar, everybody's busy with the shofar, they, they might forget. Here, you've generally got a gathering. Um, it's normally, as I say, one person who is the moil, but not only that, he would be a bocky, we hope. Um, it's true, something could crop up, but the rabbis did not make a gezeira because, just as we saw here in the Gemara, the Gemara says everybody's commanded with these mitzvahs, and not everybody's an expert. But everybody is an expert, as I say, hopefully, um, if you've got a mom. So, therefore, they didn't feel that they should make a gazera on Mila in the same way <coughs> as, for example, a lulav, where everybody has a lulav or wants to shake a lulav, um, and they may not be an expert. Similarly here, the same could happen with a Megillah. A person could have a Megillah at home. They're not an expert. They want to lay the Megillah, uh, but they don't know how to lay it, whatever. They can come up with some type of question, um, and therefore that could happen there, but wouldn't happen with Megillah. Okay? Uh, now, if I can call upon you back to faces for a minute. Well, actually, no, we don't. Let's go straight to the other source. I thought Megillah was not postponed, was brought forward on Shabbat. Oh. Uh, it they weren't where... meant to allow the time to pass or something. Am I? Oh. So that it would be read on the Friday. <laughs> so you would read, yeah, below, below Yalva. Yes, yes, yes. And that's, yeah, what I'm talking about is a Purim Meshulish. No, in the time of the, what, we have a fixed calendar. Yeah. Where the calendar is not fixed, then even the 14th could have fallen yeah. on Shabbat. So you're, you're absolutely right. Let's have a look here. Because um, I thought that in villages where you couldn't get a regular reading on Purim, you did it ahead of time if necessary. If you, to get a minyan. Did you get the, to, yeah, you, you, it, that's why you have the mission that says it could be 11, 12, 13, yeah. 14, or 15. Um, let's, just, hey, let's just find it here. Let me give you some regular. Let's see. As soon as Purim, hold on a minute. Let's just see here. The Purim, talking about the Purim Mishulish. Um, 
שבלות, שש ביחד סיבוס, שש ביחד סייד היאן. Here. You're, you're absolutely right. Actually, we let's just bring that up as, he's, as Jonathan's raised this point. So if the 14th fell on a, on a Friday, sorry, if the 14th fell on the Shabbos, which it can't now, but if it did, then it would be you could you could then lay it on the it's true the uh, the ma the small villages could lay that they wanted to make that made it always on the monday or the thursday mm. yeah if you can please peter let's go to safari of tech go to text let's go to halacha Let's go to Shulchan Aruch. Let's go to Orachayim. Let's go to, now a bit of a scrolling here, 688. There you go, 688. Scroll down to paragraph 6. Or, yeah. Right, here we go. Six. Right. Yom Chamisha Osa, this is Jonathan's ruling. Yom Chamisha Osa Shalios Bishabas. Ain Korin Hamagila. You do not blow the Megillah Bishabas. Ella Makdimim Likrosai. This is Jonathan's point. The Arab Shabbos. Govim mois matonos evionim, or machalkim oisoi babayoim. On that day, the Friday, you'd have matonos levionim giving out money. Beyoma Shabbos, you take out two sforim because it really was purim. Yeah, the shame of the river. But osim sudas purim ad yoim. Echod b'Shabbos. That's called the Purim Meshulish, where you have almost like a three-day Purim because it's split into three. Yeah, Enkar and Megillah b'Shabbos. Let's just have a look. If you, I don't know if you've got the mission bro there, but press on and let's see if we get any Purushim up on that halacha. No, no, I didn't mean that. And just press on it. Uh, commentary list. What commentary have you got? Uh, got Mr. Brewer. Yeah, Mr. Brewer. Yeah, good. Well done. That's good. Uh, Ain Kurin. Oh, there's your test, Bob. Ain Kurin. Why not? The Gozru Rabbono Shema Yelech Eitzel Chacham Lelamdo. But Eich Yikroiso Viyavi Renu Daladamas Bishus Harabim. Next one. So, what do we say? You do not blow the sh on Shabbos. But Oz Yom Shabbos Ches Ada. Oh, what he tells you is Pasha's Pasha Zoche is the week before. Uh, the Gurum really moves moves to the seventh. Okay, Begamtes, but there's nothing but after talk about the laning. And this, of course, does happen from time to time. Notice, look at your Zion. Keep going. When do you say al -Nisim? You say al -Nisim, next one, on Shabbos. But uh, not on Erev Shabbos. Even though you've lain the Megillah the day early, quite right, below Yavo, you can't lay it later than the 15th. Yes, a good call. Uh, 
But actual Purim is on the 15th, which is on Shabbos. So you'd lay on Shabbos, you'd say, Allah miss him. Wow. Um, but the actual Sudas Purim would be on the next day. On the, yeah, as you follow that through. Yeah. Uh, hold on. There we go. Domri, uh, uh, but I do. Yeah, that's what we want to see there. Yeah, then he brings me. Why, why can't you have the sutta just while we took on the on trip? A oh, good one, very good one. Don't we? The Yasu Isam Amade, you may miss the Kasim. That's as a Shamashim Hosibidisha mine, who are the Mamela. Can keep going. I think also because this idea of sending. Mishlach um, Monis, which is meant to be for the for the actual meal, so you wouldn't want that to be on Shabbos. But look where your arrow is; just move slightly to the right. The the Maral Chabib, Herich Lohiach, Maral Chabib, and Mervin Lohiach the Bavli Sheloni Shelonu. That's proving what you're referring to, Mervin. Uh, from the Bavli, it sounds like Ain Sova came with Dato Shasur Hiba Shabbos. Why not have the meal on Shabbos? And that's exactly what he did in Yerushalayim. So there seems to be an argument whether it should be on Shabbos. From the Bavli, it sounds like it really should be on the Shabbos. Um, and then he brings at the end Varad Vaz, Posaka Shulchanorach, the Kainu Dazam Morgan Avrom, a Kov Nasanel. That's a different thing. Uh, so it sounds like the general minig is um, to have it actually on the on the Sunday. That's called our, our Purim Mishula. So we Puskin like that, uh, like the Shulchan Aruch. So that was a very good call. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, now, if we can now turn. So thank you, Jonathan. A bit of clarification there. And now let's, ah, now this is the Maiserav. What is the Maiserav? Notice where it comes from, the Hebrew books. Interesting, it comes from the Sifri of Lubavitch, of all places, it doesn't matter. Uh, and what they've got in the Hebrew book, a very good, um, if, you, if you want to look up things, please go to the, the site, Hebrew books. Um, they've got a huge selection of... Um, of, of old Sforim. Now, look at this. This is the Maiserav of the Vilna Gorn with some extras. Hosophus um, Yukoris Chadoshes. One from the Pu'ula Socher, from Yisocha Bear. So, the first one on the right. He was an old Zakan Hahoro Vilna. One of the elders giving a Puskaning Shilas in, in Vilna. Um, now, so that's the front page of this safer. Now, if you can turn to the next, that's feel. Oh, so you are uh, interesting. This shows you when what the why Hebrew books is. You can find look up for yourself. Is they've taken old sforim and really just copied them and put them, and and then you've got them all there. This comes from eighteen eighty eight. This safer, I'll get hold of Tarmem Tess. Um, now, if you can go to uh, Peter, the next edition that I gave you, or the next, uh, mm, this is the one I want. Uh, scroll down a bit more. A bit more. Oh, that's it. Kufayin Hay. The Shabbos Cholomot Pesach, the Sukkos, Ubeshvuz, Yom Beis. Kodim Enkom Oicha. Remember, there's a late, we lay in the Megillah. The Nigun Batamim. And these are all Minhogim of the Vilna Gon. Um, so yes, they would. He was very particular to laying the Megillah, as uh, you know. That this is the time of the Vilna Gon. And if there was Megillah, because they were Torah, the Kulon Shomim Vakori Mitoch Mavorech makes two brachas: Al Mikra Megillah and Shechianu. Next one, if you can scroll to the next page, or Palm Achas Iklo. I'm looking right at the end there, last three words. It once happened, Milsa Chenechlash Ma'obi Shachris. 
he was actually feeling very weak, the, the Vilna Gorn. This is all a mice about the Vilna Gorn. And he told them, He said they didn't lane the Megillah. And they laned it rather the Megillah at, um, they laned this Megillah. Don't forget, I, what Megillah are we talking about here? We're not talking about Purim. We're talking about Cholamoyed, Shabbos Cholamoyed, where if it's Pesach, it will be Shira Shirim. Um, if it will be Sukkot, you'd be laming Koheles. Now, scroll down to this Pu'la Sochir. And I'm looking at letter Aleph. Uh, you may have to blow it up a little bit if you can. Zoom for us. Let's have a look what happens here. Right. 200. Too much? What is this? Is this the Shulchanara from the commentaries? No, no, no. It's not the, this is the Maisa Rav. This is, as I say, a Maisa, like things that happened with the Vilna Gorn. Oh, I see. Um, and then at the bo bottom, there's some further notes and additions. Are we okay with that? It doesn't want to let me do it. It doesn't want to do it? Okay, let's go for a what? what? No? Won't take it bigger. No, it won't take it bigger. All right, fair enough. Let's, um, if people can uh, make out this, the lettering, here we go. Now, so you understand what the, the, the case, the Vilna Gorn was very particular about laning the Megillah, if it's Koheles, Shira Shirim, of course it's Rus on Shavuos, but the ones we're looking at is Shabbos Cholamoyed. We've said you do not lane, no, Megillahs, Esther, on Shabbos. If it will be the 14th, it will come to the day before. If it will be the 15th, sorry. If it's on the 14th, it will be the day later, like Shushan Purim. If Shabbos was the 15th, as we saw from Jonathan, thank you, it actually will be brought forward a day, but not laned on the Shabbos Shema Yavirena. Why laning Shir Hashirim or Kohelis? Why are they different? You do lay that on Shabbos of Vilna Gorn, who was very particular, lay it with a bracha. Many shuls, particularly in Eretz Yisrael, lay with a bracha. That's almost universal here in Eretz Yisrael. And in some shuls in Chutz Oretz, they do the same with a bracha. In a, in a, in a proper cloth, like a sefer. Now look at his question. I in Shulchan Aruch shall I? I'm right at top. Yeah? That's where this halacha comes in. For Shomati, I heard Shehiksha, have you got it? Hocham Echod I heard that an, a wise man asked Rabbeinu Zatzal, meaning the Vilna Gorn, in Isa, Shekriyas Hamagilas Halolu Vichi of Kolkach. So important to lay them. Second line, Eich mutorim li kroison b'shabbos. V'lomo lo nixa aleim gezera. End of the line. New line. De rabba. This gezera of rabba, which we've seen in our Gemara, Shema yavi renu abba amos perushus rabim. Why does that not apply to laying kahelis in a shul? Um, on Cholamoyed Sukkot or Shabbos Cholamoyed Pesach, you'd be laning um, Shir Hashirim. For Heishiv, the Vilna Gorn himself answered, Sha Gezeira de Rabba lo Shaycha. The Gezeira of Rabba is not relevant. Ela Bechiyuvim Hamutolim al Kol Yochid Ah. Only when the obligation falls on every individual. Now, it's true. We blow the chauffeur in shul, but in fact, the obligation is on every individual. We are worried about individuals forgetting themselves and maybe carrying in the street. Continue on. Chauffeur, Lulav, Megillah, Bismanoch. 
Ah, the Heine de Daik Rabba. This is what Rabba said in our Gomorrah that we saw. Hakol Chayobim Beshoifa. Every individual has an obligation of the Shoifa. Hakol Chayobim Belulav. Hakol Chayobim Be. As we've seen, Shoifa, Lulav, Megillah. If an individual cannot hear Megillah's Esther, they have to get someone, well, they should try, to get someone to lay for them. Continue the next line. Of all but, Krius Megillus Halolu, Lo Hukfu Klau Al Hayochi. There is no obligation on the individual. Ki im al Rabin. It's part of the shul service. Kamo Krius Sefer Torah. You could ask the same thing about a Sefer Torah. Why are you allowed, we, everybody, we all know about laning in the Sefer Torah on Shabbos. Why are we worried about that? She im ein kan minion, a sorrow, next line, ein chiv klau al ha yochid. There is no obligation on the yochid to lay uh, in the Sefer Torah, or indeed Megillus Koheles. It's very nice if you do, but there's no obligation, certainly no brachas made. Okay. Ubudova she ein chiyuvon mutal. If the obligation is not placed, Ki im al horabim, only on a community, leka lemechish. There's no concern. Shema yavi renu. Why not? Kamo de omrinum ba'alma, the rule mentioned in Erevin. Rabim midkari ahadodi. Lots of people will, there'll be somebody who will remind someone. What does this mean? If you're laying in a Sefer Torah, if you're laying in Megillus Koheles, and you can't read a word, and you say, oh, I must, I, I, I forget myself and run out. Somebody in the shul will say, just one minute, you, it's Shabbos, sorry. So this, when there's a chiv on a community, the rules of rabba, which was, do not do this mitzvah on Shabbos, do not apply. Yeah? Back now to faces, please. Thank you very much, Peter. A fascinating piece from the Vilna Gorn, and that question was raised to him directly, and that was the answer he gave. Malcolm. Sorry, can I just ask a very basic question? You mentioned yeah. earlier on, you said in sort of passing, yes, it doesn't matter, you know, if there's an error, if it doesn't matter, it doesn't count. So, I mean, the point is, the main objection all these people you're know, quoting have is carrying. Yes. So what is the state, what is the point of the Erev in that case? Oh, absolutely. The Erev is very, it allows you to carry personal things, but they made a blanket ruling that the, the chauffeur cannot be blown anywhere. No, you're right. You might have thought, well, I've got an Erev, why can't I carry here? Because yeah. they made a blanket ruling that chauffeur would not be sounded on Shabbos, full stop. That is a very good question. Why not if there's an Erev? Because it's, a, as I say, well, the, the rule they normally use is the word low plug. They, there's no difference between different areas. And therefore, yes, you can carry other th other items, but the shofar, in other words, they've said, they've, and that, that's part of very interesting, we'll come perhaps to that in the next couple of weeks, or next week perhaps. Um, is there no mitzvah at all? What it looks like, there is no mitzvah of... Oh, let me ask you this question. If, let's say, someone blew the shofar on Shabbos or Rosh Hashanah. Now, they're not allowed to. The rabbi said they shouldn't. Have they actually fulfilled a biblical mitzvah? Woo, that's interesting. Yeah, difficult one. Have they? Or... <laughs> It looks like the rabbis, and they have the power to do this. There are other examples of this. We'll have to see this. The rabbis have actually annulled it. it there is no mitzvah, which is fascinating. And we'll have to look into this a little bit more. Um, so what we're saying, therefore, is there's no mitzvah of shofar. It's been removed. The rabbis have a power, and, and it's been done <coughs> Shavi Altar said, don't do a mitzvah. 
The rabbis have said there is no mitzvah if it's on a Shabbos, and it doesn't matter whether there's an Arab or no Arab, and or in our mission, of course, only in front of this Bezdin, but everywhere else, they've removed the mitzvah of shofar. They've removed the lulav. They've removed. There is no mitzvah. You're not actually performing anything if you actually blow the shofar on Shabbos. So therefore, that will answer your question. It's blanket in as much as they've annulled the mitzvah. It's, yeah, not, but, it's, but, it's, not, it's not annulled because the mitzvah of Avera. That doesn't, wouldn't apply. Avera uh, to No, it looks... Well, well perhaps we'll look at it in the bit next week. Um, there is actually a, a machlokas about what I'm saying. Uh, but m- most, many hold that in fact they've annulled the mitzvah entirely. That will answer Malcolm's okay. question in a very simple way. If otherwise, you'd have to say that even though there is this mitzvah, they've said, no, don't do the mitzvah. Back to Malcolm's question, well, if there's an air of why not? Because they've made a, what they say a low plug, they've made it universal. Um, even though with an air of they, you could, nevertheless, they've said, no, we don't want the shofar to be blown anywhere if it's on a Shabbos. Yeah. Is it, but I is it related to um, the Gamliel? declaring that Yom Kippur was on a certain day. And no. That, 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 you know, when when he, there was a dispute about... The, the, you know, oh, I see what you mean. There was and, a machluch that we saw. No, about the working on the calendar. It's not because of the calendar. It's not the calendar. No, no, but I'm saying that the authority, it's a question of authorities. Yeah, yeah, like, well, yeah. The, the power of the authorities, yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, oh, I see what you mean. The, that point there, you know, you've got to follow the the um, the authority keep the rules even though you may have thought something different yourself yeah that that was a, a similar type of idea where the chachomim is saying now uh, there is uh, and that's to say the simplest way there is no mitzvah on rosh hashanah uh, on a shabbos with the shofar so with that gentlemen we'll close for today um behind the time of the megillah very good indeed so thank you very much indeed um, it looks like Peter, you've got the um, sources for next week. <laughs> uh, I don't think we're going to go beyond Duff Lamad, that's for sure. So, uh, so I think you've got the um, the sources there. And uh, meanwhile, I wish everybody well, and uh, have a very good week, one and all. We shall Thank you.